You can download the answer in the video for free, link in the description. An enum in Goda is a list of words that represent an integer. By default, the values of an enum counts from 0 onwards, with the first word being equal to 0, the second being equal to 1, and the third being equal to 2. Additionally, you can set the value of a word inside of an enum. In this example, first is set to negative 10. This means that second would then equal negative 9. Then I manually set third to 12, which makes fourth continue on and equal 13, and fifth equal 14. You can see that the next word from an enum will always have a value of 1 more than the previous word. Now, something you you might notice is that an enum is essentially just a dictionary full of names that equal an integer value. But why use an enum instead of a dictionary? When a dictionary has the flexibility of holding many different types of values, like strings, arrays, floats, and more. That is because an enum serves a completely different purpose, typically being used to make the code more readable by removing what is known as a magic number, a number that isn't self-explanatory, with a word that explains what you are setting something to. For example, if I have an enum for the rarity of an item, then when I spawn an item, based on the rarity I will set the item's color inside of the spawn item function. We will have a built-in variable called rarity, which is of a type of item rarity, meaning that this variable, although equal to an integer, is represented by the enum and its values, which will cause Godot to have a warning stating that I'm using a number and not an enum value, as the proper way to use enums is to write the name of the enum, then the word, although if you need to use a number, then you can just add as item rarity, or whatever is the name of the enum. Now to further the point of using an enum and explaining magic numbers more, when spawning we will use a match function, which is basically the same as using an if statement, and we will check if the rarity is equal to 1, 2, or 3. Now these are magic numbers, as you can't determine what rarity 1, 2, or 3 even means by just looking at the match function. So instead of writing something like this, we will instead write something like this, where we check the enum and grab the specific word for the rarity that we're trying to check. And by doing this, we also remove the dependency on the order of words inside of the enum, as rather than checking for a number, we are instead checking for a word. Again, keep in mind that a match function is very similar to an if statement. So if we were to use an if statement, for example, then the comparison would be between if rarity is equal to 0, which we don't want to use 0 as it's a magic number and doesn't explain what it means or what it is. So instead, we would write if rarity is equal to item rarity dot common. Now, another example of using enums is to grab a value from an array. So in this example, where we are spawning items with colors based on their rarity, we can create an array that stores the color of each rarity. And keep in mind in this usage, the order of the values in the array must match that of the enum. And then instead of using a match or if statement, we can just set the modulate to the array, grabbing the color at the position of the rarity, as an enum is just an integer, making grabbing from an array easy. Now another good usage of enums is with export variables, as exporting an enum will provide a drop-down list on the right, avoiding the potential of misspelling a string, or setting an export to the wrong integer or value, again avoiding those magic numbers. Now there are two ways to export an enum. The first is to do a basic export variable, but set its type to an existing enum. The second way is to export enum, then type all of the words as strings inside of brackets. And if you want to change the value of any of these enum entries, then next to the name, add a colon and then the number. Again, this is the same as what we were doing before, where we use an equal sign on a regular enum entry. And the choice between which export method to use will depend on the purpose of your enum, as you can use the regular export on the existing enum to have all the benefits mentioned before with enums, such as checking if the variable is equal to item rarity .common. whereas by using the second export method, you essentially lost the enum and the variable is just treated as a regular integer, with the only difference between export enum and just exporting an integer being that export enum provides a drop down selection. Although I would recommend just using the regular export on an existing enum, as most likely you will need to reference the enum later in your script. Now in the case that you have multiple scripts with enums, and you have scripts that reference or grab other scripts just to use their enums, then what you should do is create a global enum script, go to file, new script, name it enum global, and press create, then inside all of the scripts with enums that you want to reference from other scripts. Use controller command plus x to cut the enum out of the script and then paste it inside of the enum global script. Keep in mind that you only want to include enums that need to be grabbed or referenced from by multiple scripts inside of your game. You don't need to include enums that are exclusively used by the single script that they appear in. Then to make it so this enum is reachable and can be used by other scripts, go to project, project settings, then under globals, press the folder icon, select the enum global script and press open. Then this is the name that we will use to reference the script and grab the enums. Then press add. You can change the name by double left clicking it. Now now, when we want to grab an enum from the various scripts in our game, we can grab the enum global script, then the specific enum that we want, then the word from inside that enum, making it easier to grab or use a single enum list from multiple different scripts in your game, and also making it easier to edit those various enums as they're all in the one place. Now you have a basic example of using enums for item rarity, as well as some basic use cases of enums, which you can add to any of your Godot games. And don't forget that you can check out the project files, link in the description.